Hey, what's going on everyone? Vega here for Serpent X Tech, and in this video we'll be taking a quick look at the Orico M.2 NVMe SSD external enclosure. Now, I've been burnt by enclosures before, saying that they can achieve specific speeds, but then when you actually use them, it's not hitting that because these NVMe drives tend to thermal throttle, and if you're not dissipating that heat, you're not going to get the full performance. So we're going to see if this guy can hit the marketing terms that's on their webpage. Now, while this is an Amazon website that we're looking at the actual company orico reached out to us and sent us the enclosure and they claim here 10 gigabits per second um and the reads and writes can do a thousand megabytes per second but on a normal like sata type ssd or drive you can only do five gigabits per second and 450 megabytes reads and writes and again i've been burned by enclosures before claiming that so we got a drive here perfectly capable of pushing or hitting those limits it's the silicon power um it's a gen 3 by 4 but it can hit read speeds of 2200 megabits per second and 1600 on the rights uh the max that this enclosure can hold as far as storage is four terabytes but let's take a look at the product now what you get in the box obviously is not the ssd or mvme drive but is this actual enclosure with the type c connector at the top and then this i'm assuming might be an led or hard drive indicator to open it up you got a little pack down here. You can see the arrow and it looks like we have to push it very gently to do that. There you go. And then you take this off. Now this, that's metal, obviously, but I don't see any of the heat sink. Nope, there it is. There's a heat sink inside the packaging as well as uh, some thermal pads and some M2 screws or some um hardware that we need to mount the ssd onto it so let me take a look here here's the connector for it on the very end if you can see it right so we gotta slot that in there go at it in an angle be gentle please almost looks like it has two slots nope only one A little bit steeper of an angle than I'm used to compared to like motherboards and stuff. But angle it, get it in there, make sure it's making contact, push it down. And now we get to attach our hardware. What's actually interesting is that these aren't little screws. These are actually little rubber uh, pegs, kind of like what you would see on some of your fans. So it looks like we slot that in on a little section there on the m.2 and then push down yep just like that it sits in there actually grabs pretty well now because the back side is plastic there's no heat sinking material I, the other enclosure did at at least have a heat sink on the back side but that's not the case with this one and then we just need to put our thermal pad on the top side of this particular drive and Make sure you peel both sides because both sides does have protective layer on top of it. A little bit crooked, but as long as it's touching everything, that's fine. And then peel the other half of the thermal pad uh, protective cover away. And now we can drop our little heat sink on it. I mean, it's got slits or fins in it, but I don't think it's going to really do us any good. Thermal pad's a little bit longer than the heat sink. So you can see it's sticking out a little bit at the bottom, mostly at the top, but it's covering all our major components, making sufficient contact. So now we can put this back on, slide it on, make sure the heat sink got pushed down a little bit, make sure the heat sink isn't hitting, slide that all the way down. And then the cap, you can see the little ends here, only goes in one way. And there we go. So now let's get this connected and do some speed test on it and see what our drive hits in here when we know we could get 2200 reads or 1600 writes on a normal M.2 drive connected to our motherboard. Obviously, via any USB connector, there's a little bit of a, a, a bottlenecking going on, but let's find out. Type-C to Type-C, direct connect, and see what the speeds are. So now, obviously... Uh, 
the benchmarks are going to vary. I want to spread it out. So we got ADO, we got SSDZ to get some additional information, AS, SSD, crystal disk mark. But I had to set up or format the drive. Whenever you get a new drive, you got to obviously format it. You just right click, go to disk management, opens up the window, and then it will pop up a little prompt. You know, do you want to format it as GPT um, or, you know, MBR, whatever you choose, whatever fits your needs. And then you got to scroll down, right click, and then format or allocate the disk, right? So make sure you do that. Otherwise, it won't be detected. Open up your benchmark software. And actually, I, I can't see a lot of information. I was hoping to see some thermals on hardware info, but I can't. It's actually detecting an error or, or it just gives us drive uh, failure or warning. doesn't give us thermals like the other SSDs. But if we scroll down here, here it is at the very bottom. And let's go ahead and run our slew of benchmarks. So this enclosure is actually hitting the rated speeds that it says on its marketing page. Uh, so around 915 megabytes per second writes and 963 on the reads. It did uh, not perform very well on the 4K random reads and writes, but it did pretty good. Uh, the biggest thing is latency or the access time. Pretty low. You're not going to see when you have a high latency, you're going to have impacts um, on your overall performance or day-to-day -day use cases. But overall, it is still hitting its speeds that the marketing page um, has uh, mentioned as well. In hardware info, we saw a peak of 1,012 megabits per second or megabytes per, per second on the reads and 962 on the writes. So yeah, this drive does do it all. And it does hit the, the marketing terms that it even has on the back of this. But you want to use Type-C to Type-C, not Type-C to Type-A uh, port, okay? But when you convert to Type-A, that's when you start to reduce the speeds. Thermally, you know, I had my hand basically on this case, and it just feels slightly warm, but not too bad whatsoever. So it is keeping thermals in check. However, it would just be nice for these enclosure companies, whether it's Orico or any company, to have a way to at least allow a hardware info or some program, whether it's ADA64, to be able to see the thermals. Because we know we take these M MBME or SSDs and put them into a M.2 slot on a motherboard, we can see thermal information of that particular drive. But when it comes to enclosures, we lose that information. So it would be nice if the enclosure companies will figure out how to do that. But nonetheless, this drive performs exactly as it's marketed for. And I hope that you use this data well. This is going to be a great drive for my son to continue to produce his music and store his content uh, for whatever he does, including myself. If you're on the go, this drive may be able to serve its purposes for you. You could probably load it up with some games. And if you don't have enough space on your laptop or portable device, you can easily load your Steam library on it connect it to your device and still have it wherever you are in the world. But that's going to do it for today's video. Just wanted to share that data with you and the review of the Orico M.2 NVMe SSD enclosure. Uh, check it out. Link is in the description. And I hope you have yourself a wonderful day. Please do me a favor on the way out. Hit the like button. Make sure to get subscribed. Hit the notification bell to stay up to date as well as check out some of the links in the description to help support us and what we do here. And I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.